sky, and that was the buzzer. I think the blinds are going up. And Keston, who's still in front, the loosest. Jim Britton, down to 66,000. 66, it's easy for me to say. Robin Keston's still in front. 884. Yeah, as far as bet frequency goes, Robin Keston has been playing by a factor of two, twice as many hands as the next competitor. Two rather attractive hands limping in. Queen Jack suited the pair of nines, and Jim Britton, who's got a bag full of beach balls. The pair of nines, Stephen Bovis, doesn't feel like getting too aggressive with those. They're medium pairs. They can get you into trouble, and they would have got you into trouble because... Yeah. 6,000. 6,000. Merle's queen is now leading. Four. Bovis now doesn't believe. <laughs> no, I suppose he's got Five. some right to not believe, but the trouble is now putting some money. And what happens if a blank like a two comes? And Merrill bets again a small amount. Well, the king may slow him down a bit. Check. Huh, Stephen Bovis. Well. Yeah. 8,000. Cool. cool. The funny thing is, by just calling there on the, on the flop, I mean, Bovis has uh, sort of opened up the possibility that he may have a seven. Gonna have to bet big now, Bovis, to get eight thousand. Eight thousand. Murrell off this hand. <laughs> wow, this has gone backwards and forwards all over the place. I, I give up. Bluff, double bluff, <laughs> double de bluff. Now what do you do? Well, look at the pot size, fifty thousand, and, and Murrell's only bet eight. I mean, uh, it, it smacks almost of a defensive bet more than anything. There's. Oh. Yep. There's no way. I was gonna say this. There was no way that Stephen Bovis could have folded there, but. Which of these nuts has got the most guts? We'll see after this. No one to play with? There's always PartyPoker.com. We saw a couple of weeks ago where Mickey Wernick got his way to 200,000 without ever winning a big pot and ever turning over a hand. And Paul Merle is certainly in that mode. Oh, and Bovis is a bit hotted up lately, just limping in to Matt Shields' big blind. They both missed the flop. I think Steve Bovis is just trying to hit something. He's just a bit, not, I wouldn't say on tilt so much, as just hoping things go right nice. after the flop. Well, look at that situation. 12, Bovis in front, but how can he put any more money in? Hmm. He's checked it twice. You don't want to be calling, do you? The yep from <laughs> Bovis <It> means capitulation. <laughs> well, Matt Shields has been a real silent thief. I, I don't think he's actually made the best hand yet tonight, although he did have a, f a full house at one point. But uh, most of the pots he's won, I think uh, over half of them, have been uh, with the worst hand on the draw, on the semi bluff, just uh, chipping and chopping away. And uh, no surprise, he's from the Midlands. Yes. 39 years old, born on the same day as Wild Bill. <laughs> I assume Wild Bill Hickok, 29th of the 4th. And sadly, Matt, with no nickname uh, to speak of, uh, if the questionnaire that the players are asked to fill out beforehand is anything to go by, he's without nickname, which is a very sad affair in the world of <laughs> poker. It's really, you're nobody if you have no nickname. It's something he needs to go out and acquire as quick as he can. How about Marlboro Red? <laughs> no advertise. <laughs> we've uh, we've built a little pot here, by the way. A couple of limpins and the blinds, four thousand apiece, making sixteen thousand. There's a few attractive hands out there. Something that gets people excited. And there's some big hits here. Well, that's a case nine out there. Three players have got the nine. But Britain has the. Top two alongside it. That's a marvellous hand Check. for 
Britain. How does he play it? Fifteen. Fifteen. Fast. Pot size oh. bet. Perhaps too much for any customers. But he's got to stop anybody with a flush draw. Oh, and Bovis is cool. having a little bit of a confrontation here with Britain. And he's going to be coming off much the worst of it. Shields has the nine as well. With uh, It's not really a better hand than Stephen Bovis's. It's just a... It's a nightmare for the <laughs> both of them, really, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Funny thing is, there are no more nines in the deck. But uh, a oh. king would probably see Bovis getting all the money. And do you think the hump is involved here? Well, there was a little bit of words earlier. It looks like they may have been carried over, or he just thinks that nine is good enough on its own. Well, that four, uh, that would have made Paul Merle three fours. That could have really got the mustard flowering. Jim, check. Oh, and he's really yeah. put the brakes on here, Jim Britton. Nines. Two pair. Nines. Did you find that odd that Jim Britton slowed down like that? Well, he thinks he, he's, he's furious with himself, absolutely furious with himself. You can survive for a bit longer, and that's just what Steve Bovis is doing. Murrell out in front, 178, but uh, everything very much still to play for here. Bovis on the big blind, so he doesn't have to put any more money in for a while. Keston back to getting rubbish. Pass. On the big blind, what does Bovis do? Probably raise. And hope he doesn't run into a steamroller. Yeah, I mean, Stephen has really come alive this level, and uh, right. he's looking to get action. I think it's a big raise here. 20,000 total. Uh-oh. Re-raise. Re-raise. Mm, and the strongest better around the table stamps his authority once again over the line. Sticking plenty of chips in now. It's a deep red reach. And that puts Bovis, I would imagine, all in. More, well, not far thousand. off it. Pass. And where does Bovis go? Nowhere. Pass. Tough decision. Stephen Bovis had stuck a little under half his chips in on the raise, and uh, that was probably intended to get no action. Instead, all it's done is really cost him. Do you think he was a bit too aggressive there with the, the Queen-7, or is it just a bit of bad luck that he ran into a big hand? Well, he was on the button. I suppose in this format, that's the place to raise from. I've heard some of the players talking recently, and they were, <laughs> they were saying that, you know, the button for so long has been considered a stealing position. And uh, everybody's picked up on it now, so that people just expect when the button raises that uh, they've got nothing. So now the new stealing position is one off the button. <laughs> Raise. Raise. 18. 18,000 total. Well, he folded ace-queen earlier, but that was because of a raise. This time he's the first to speak. So he, he raises, and he's found a pair of sevens. The classic confrontation, unless somebody else has got anything better. 35,000 total. A re-raise is not much, and Matt Shields... A decision, but not a big one. A raise and a re-raise with ace-jack. <coughs> you can't really be going anywhere with this, other than downhill. That seems to be exactly what Shields is working out. Pass. So we've seen Pass. an ace out. I don't think... Oh, Robin Keston. Oh, wow. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. All in. <coughs> All in. That's a massive bet. And the verbal AI, the oh. key for Robin Keston here, is not Stephen Bovis's hand, but it is Paul Merle. And that's the man who he's put under pressure right now. Well, that's a very, very interesting bet. And one that asks an enormous question of Merle the Lemon. He can't really, he can't really do it, can he? Oh, this is going to be thrilled to see Robin Kesson's ace king because the alacrity with which Kesson put him in signals a pair bigger than sevens. And with three aces out, Steve, uh, <coughs> Bovis's sevens are looking pretty strong. Oh, you got a deuce three or something? Yes, only four cards in the pack that can help Keston. He wouldn't know that, of course. He hasn't seen any of these cards. Oh. 